Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we honor your presence. Give you glory, God. We give you glory. Truly, you're worthy, King Jesus. All the honor and the praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Bless your name, O oh God. We bow our hearts before you, King Jesus, to give you reverence. And you will be exalted in the midst, O oh God. Have your way in us, O oh God, on today. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory in Christ Jesus. That we are overcomers, O oh Lord. And we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord God. For you are high and lifted up, O oh God, reigning in the light of glory, Father God. All the earth shall worship you, sing praise to thy name, O oh Most High. Thank you, Father. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Amen, amen. Good evening, good evening. Praise the Lord. It is 602. We're going to go ahead and get started with our class tonight. We pray that it has been informative and encouraging and enriching to you to help you make it through different challenges that you have to endure on your daily journey. Pray that you are being inspired by the Word of God to grow in grace and a knowledge of who He is. For truth, it's been a wonderful lesson that I've been teaching the last several, several, several months. Actually, it's been like four or five months now. But I thank the Lord for the wisdom and the knowledge that He's given us from this book, breaking the threefold demonic cord. How to desire and defeat the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. And we have to recognize that's a spirit that's at work that creeps into the church unaware in a subtle way to bring destruction in the house of God. We're living in a time where people are falling away from the faith that we have to know within ourselves who we are, what the Lord has promised us in his word, that we have the power to defeat the enemy in any form he comes in our lives. But we have to want the victory. Amen. So I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. Then we'll go ahead and do a devotion this evening. And then we're going to go, go ahead and engage in our lesson tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about what the Lord says about Jezebel. What the Lord says about Jezebel. The devotion says, Jesus, I know. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God, today my life will never be the same. Lord, I know. Lord, I want you, I want you with me all day and every day. I have found freedom. Now I am free forever. I am totally consumed with you, Lord. I cannot be in a better place this very moment. In my life, Father, I need your guidance and direction. I know as I rest in you, I will hear your voice directing me. My reward in life comes through Jesus. Through you, Jesus, Lord, I am opening myself to receive all knowledge and wisdom from you. Father, I am living and growing with more of you, God. That is so wonderful. Wonderful to know that we have the spirit of living to dwell in our hearts, that we can grow in the wisdom and the knowledge of who God is in our lives every day as we desire to grow. We will grow. We will advance in the kingdom of God. We'll operate in the anointing. The spirit of God will continue to use you to empower you to destroy the kingdom of the enemy by your faith of walking in obedience to the leash of the Holy Spirit. Here's the other devotion it says from the book, Jesus Calling. Keep your eyes on me. Waves of adversity are washing over you and you feel tempted to give up. As your circumstances consume more and more of your attention, you're losing sight of me. Yet I am with you always, 
holding you by your right hand. I am fully aware of your situations. And I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able to bear. If you try to carry tomorrow's burdens today, you will stagger under the load and eventually fall flat. You must discipline yourself to live within the boundaries of today. It is in the present moment that I walk close to you, helping you carry your burdens. Keep your focus on my presence in the present. That is so encouraging right there to know that even we are consumed with circumstance situations, we still can find ourselves resting in the leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ, not allow ourselves to be worried and consumed by the things of the world, but to stand fast in the liberty of Christ made us free. For it's in Christ Jesus that we overcome, that we are victorious. And you're able to endure anything that comes your way if you learn how to cast your burdens on the Lord. Amen? So that's what we want to do today is cast those burdens on the Lord. Allow God to have the and authority to lead and guide you in this way that he has ordained for you to walk in. That you stay close to him. He'll draw near to you. You draw nigh to him. We have to want to draw near to the Lord. You got to want it. If you don't want to draw near to God, keep doing what you're doing. Because you're going to fall flat on your face. Because sin and iniquity in the heart will destroy you. And that's what the enemy's tactics is. That's his plan. It's to destroy you from the inside out. So I encourage you. Get in the word of God. Allow the word of God to be embedded in your heart. To lead you in the truth of God's word. And wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining in tonight. Those of you who are just tuned in. God bless you. We're going to go ahead and engage in our lesson tonight. So, Father, in Jesus' name, God, I thank you for this opportunity, oh God, to share your word once again. I pray for wisdom, for knowledge, insight, understanding, for leadership and guidance from the Holy Spirit to speak your word, oh God, to bring life, that you would manifest your power, oh God, even through this word, to bring conviction to all of our hearts. And I pray, oh God, that you set us free from the inside out. I lift up my daughter's grandmother right now, Father, who's in critical condition. Pauline Nelson, Lord God. We call her name before you, Lord God, and release the blood of the Lamb to permeate her body right now in the name of Jesus to bring healing. As she's fighting for her life, oh God, from a heart attack, I pray, oh God, that you bring full recovery in her body and restoration. In the name of Jesus, God. I rebuke the spirit of death right now, God, that's trying to suck the life out of her, God. We pray that you allow her to live and to recover and be restored by your spirit. Have your God-like will, if it be thy will, God. Let your will be done, but not my will, but nevertheless thy will be done. And I thank you, Lord God, for every person tuning in today, oh God, that something will be said to encourage, that will edify, will strengthen, that will build up in their faith to trust you. And help them stand fast in the liberty of Christ has made us free. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you again for tuning in tonight, those of you who are on, on live with me right now. I tell you, it's been a, a wonderful lesson. Last week we were talking about the manifestation of Jezebel. Jezebel. And I mean, it's like so many different, different characteristics of Jezebel and not only many different influences and different tactics that she used to attack the body of Christ. We talked about her lack of submission. We talked about her seductive nature. We talked about her pride and all the different things she does to, to lure you and bait you. Talk about the pits against leadership. I mean, just all types of destruction she tried to bring into the body of Christ to wreak havoc. We talked about she seeks opportunity to teach heresies in the body of Christ, false doctrine. She twists the scriptures. I mean, it's so much we talked about. If you want to listen to the full lesson, you go back to uh, last week's lesson on my YouTube channel. The link is tagged on the bottom of the comment page on, on the live. 
You can go back on there and you can go and follow the lesson from last week. It's really interesting and very encouraging and informative. And I thank God that he has given me the instruction to teach this word because it's really bringing a change in, in even in my life and the life of those who hear this word. Amen. So tonight we want to talk about what the Lord says about Jezebel. What the Lord says about Jezebel. Amen. So we're going to talk about that. In just a moment, let me do something here. One second. Pray to God. I pray that you're standing firm in faith of Jesus Christ. You had a beautiful day and enjoying the weather. The weather was really nice today here in Milwaukee. I don't know where you are, if you're in Indiana or other places. We pray that the weather has been nice for you today as well. But we put to get some snow again. So we're going to go into our lesson tonight. So it's Jezebel is mentioned in the both the Old and New Testament. Revelations chapter 2, 18 to 21. We read this last week. How God had a problem with the church of Thyatira because they allowed the fornication of the spirit of Jezebel to creep into the house of God. So it says the Lord specifically addresses the evil seductive powers of Jezebel and her adverse effect on the church in Thyatira. Though Jezebel was long since dead, the spirit in which she operated was still influencing the churches. And this was what God was addressing. Jezebel had introduced idolatrous worship, led his servants astray, and encouraged them into sexual sins. He warned the church members if, that if they continued to tolerate her evil seductions, he would strongly discipline them. The Lord rebuked anyone who tolerates her evil plans and maneuvers. And that's what we talked about last week is how the seducing spirit it leads you to a place of fornication and adultery. Because you become adulterous anytime you put something else before God. You might say, well, I haven't slept with nobody's husband or nobody's wife or haven't done this or done that. But if you allow yourself to get caught in other materialistic things that take the place of God in your life, you commit a spiritual adultery. And you allow yourself to fall prey to the enemy's tactics through Jezebel's spirit. And that spirit is a strong spirit. That influences the people of God to fall into a dark place of sin and become idol worshipers. And that's what it says. That same spirit in the church today, it creeps into the house of God today and, and it brings heresies and false doctrine. It brings lies in the body of Christ and confusion and causes people to fight each other in the body of Christ. So we have to get to a place in ourselves. We recognize this unclean spirit and rebuke that spirit out the house. Get it out of your house, out of your spiritual house, your, your, your home. Get it out of your children. Get it out of your marriage. That spirit is a strong spirit wants to control and destroy your entire life and everything attached to you. If you're not prayed up or not paying attention, that spirit will come into your heart and bring destruction in your whole life destiny. And to try to stop everything that God has placed in force for you to do in your life. Even if you are called to a certain ministry, a certain calling, anointing in your life to do certain things in the body of Christ. The reason why the Jezebel spirit attacks the people of God so much is because that spirit does not want you to come up against that spirit. It doesn't want you to fight and destroy that spirit from influencing God's people. That's the reason why we have a lot of people in the body of Christ. They're always in conflict and confusion and fighting each other and arguing and, and quickly cuss each other out when he, as soon as they walk out of church. We have to recognize that unclean spirit that enters through our ear gates, our mindsets, our hearts. And we speak it out of our mouths and negativities and destruction, not just over ourselves, but the life of other people. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allowed that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. You hear that? 
Jezebel calls herself to be a prophetess, but she's not a prophet of the Lord. She's a prophetess of the enemy to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her, se her sexual immorality, and she did not. Indeed, I will cast her into her sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her go into great tribulation, unless they repent of their evil deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the church would know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts, and I will give each one of you according to the, your words. So listen to this. So God is declaring judgment over the spirit of Jezebel. Anyone who engages in and adulteration, God is declaring judgment over you unless you come to the place of repentance. If you don't repent of your wicked ways and turn back to the Lord, God says you're going to be held into the great tribulation. Judgment God calls on the earth in the last days. It's so much that's going to happen in the last day where God is going to bring punishment upon people because they refuse to follow after his truth and righteousness. One thing God told King Saul, when Saul disobeyed God, when he told him to kill the Malachites and he didn't do it, Samuel spoke to him a word from the Lord said, does not God take delight in, in sacrifice versus obedience? In other words, God is looking for a heart that's obedient than a sacrifice. He says that your iniquity is what caused you to sin against God. And that's pretty much what he was saying. So you say your rebellious and stubbornness and your and, and you say your iniquity. Iniquity become idolatry. It's because that's what he did, allow other things on the enemy to take the place to make excuses for his mistakes. We have to recognize when we mess up and make a mistake before God repent and get back in right standing with the Lord. Allow the Lord to purify your heart and set you free from the inside out. Dear ones, when God begins to point out a specific fault, we had better listen. We need to listen when warning comes. Because your stubbornness becomes idolatry, which is wickedness. Your rebellion is witchcraft. Because you allow the enemy to seduce you to turn against God. And when God gives a warning, he says, warning goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The Lord specifically warned the church of Thyatira of her sin. Though the church was commended for its positive qualities, God brought his correction concerning the church toleration of Jezebel. So it was a good church, but they had a bad seed in that church. They tolerated the Jezebel spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem God has. When you tolerate something you know is not right in your life, you might be yoked with a person in, in a relationship who you know is not following God, who you know doesn't care anything about God, and they're constantly pulling you down from your walk in Christ. You have people who are signed by the enemy, who looks loving, looks caring, looks concerned about you, but they're on assignment by the enemy to destroy your faith. You have to be careful who you yoke up with, who you sleep with. Because I heard this one lady say to me, she says, every person that you lie down with, you get their spirit in you. And when she said that, it made, made sense because the word told the same thing. The word is a person a harlot becomes one spirit with that harlot. He who joins up with the Lord becomes one with the Lord. So if I lie down with an individual and I'm not married to that individual, that's a fornication. If you lie down with a married person, that's adultery. And you're in sin with God. Because God calls it sin. 
But one thing about God, he gives you the opportunity to repent. But the problem comes in, our pride settles in our heart. We know we out of order with God, but we continue to keep doing the same thing we shouldn't do. Because I want to appease my flesh. Yes. And the more you appease your flesh, the more and more or less your zeal to serve God begins to dry up. Your passion dries up. Yes, your anointing dries up. The power depletes of God. Because now you're not focused. You lost your, your focus. You're distracted. And he knows exactly what to do to distract you. My God, my God. Mm, mm, mm. It is true that this warning was written to a specific church in the city of Thyatira. But needed adjustments holds true today for every church. Ministry, ministers, and lay persons. Warning for every person who walks in any form of ministry. Jezebel's spirit, the way the evil realms uses her tactics, is still in operation today, and God detests her, her God detests her spirit and our toleration of this evil spirit and the influence of this spirit. In other words, become an abomination to God. It's, it's sin to God. It's weakness to God. And God is not playing with the church. That's why he said detest. We become gross. Bitter. Foul in the eyes of God. She calls herself a prophetess. But it's not. She teaches and seduces God's servant to commit fornication. Fornication is not just sexual sin. The term refers to desiring anything before its time. Thus aborting the proper timing of things. There's a time and season for everything. And when you try to jump ahead of God to fulfill your own fleshly desires, you are operating out of the timing of the will of God. God has an individual assigned for everybody's life, those who desire to be married in relationship. It's on timing, it's on season when those things will happen in your life. But you have to be patient and wait on God and stay committed and be married to Christ. When you're married to Christ, you make him Lord of your life, you make him put him first in your life. And everything that God has for you we begin to fall line upon line, precept upon precept, according to the will God has established to happen in your life. <coughs> the desire is active because one knows that it will eventually happen. But the Jezebel spirit, listen to this, convinces us that we have no time to wait. It convinces us that we have to have it now. So I got to have sex right now. So that means even getting engaged in an adult relationship, I want it right now. So it doesn't matter what it, it means trying to get a promotion on your job in a sneaky, cheap, conniving way. I got to have it right now. So anything the enemy puts in your mind to do that's not of God is a trap. It's a bait to deceive and manipulate you, to fall prey to the enemy's tactics. Check this out. She teaches God's servants to eat things sacrificed to idols. Ain't that something? She teaches people to eat things sacrificed to idols. Eating food sacrificed to idols is what I refer to as eating the devil's words. Have mercy. Jesus. God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Because when you allow the enemy to feed you with his enticing words, it's a trap. 
Because he knows exactly what to say and what to do to deceive you and manipulate you to turn away from obeying God's word. So he feeds you the things that looks appealing to the flesh of the world to captivate your attention. We must guard our ears. I say it all the time. Guard your ear gate. Guard what you see. Guard what you allow to get into your mind. Because you don't guard yourself. You're setting yourself up for failure and destruction. Because now you're allowing the enemy to use you in a way he wants to use you to destroy you. We must guard our ears and partake only what God says concerning our situations and us. We have to guard our hearts. We have to guard what goes in and what comes out of us. Just because you get angry sometimes at an individual doesn't give you the right to speak your mind. Because the word tells us do not be hasty to become angry. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. If you allow somebody to get you so mad, to pull you out of your character, you allow them to make you a fool. I don't care how mad you get, I don't care how tested it becomes, I don't care how much they irritate you, the Holy Spirit put a bit in your mouth and a it on your tongue. Because if you're not careful, the enemy will do just what he wants to do to destroy your life. We we'll guard our ears and partake with what God says concerning our situation in us. Number four, Jezebel hates repentance. You hear that? She hates repentance. She despises repentance because she knows once I repent God forgives me but if she can keep you in a vulnerable state of denial where your sin becomes right in your own eyes and you justify and you refuse to repent before God you're bringing judgment on yourself she blocks repentance in the congregation through selfish and self-centered prayers. Have you ever heard someone pray a prayer? No, all they do is pray about themselves and their family, about their promotions, about the things that they have accomplished in their life. They don't care about nobody else, don't care about the church. It's all about themselves. Until it gets to the place where it says, usually rooted in jealousy and by causing offenses. So the spirit of jealousy creeps in because I want more. I'm not satisfied with what I have. I want more. So I become offensive to other people. Offenses against each other opens the doors to death structure. Ain't that something? An offense opened a door to death structure where at? In your mind. Because the enemy sets camp in your mind to set up a fortress to lock you into your place of sin. To prevent you from coming out. And then he fills your heart with misery and guilt and condemnation. Do you refuse to repent, refuse to allow God to heal your broken heart? Party. People to agree with your sinful life and your misery so you band together and stay in a dark place. Those who come into agreement with Jezebel suffers great tribulations. Oh my, this is the part I do not like to discuss. I grieve over what happens when one agrees with this evil stronghold. The word tribulation, listen to this, translates as affliction, 
trouble, anguish, persecution, burden, a pressing pressure, distress, suffering, oppression, narrow, and press hard upon. That's what tribulation is. So when you rebel against God, you invite tribulation in your heart. Well, all these different attributes begin to manifest. Affliction. Body becomes sick. Trouble just keep coming from every side. Anguish. Restlessness. Anxiety. Stress. Persecution. Feel like everybody's against you. Burning down. All the stuff going wrong in your life. Oppressing. That's in the place of oppression. You become oppressed. Pressure. Feel like you've been squeezed into a box and can't get out. I'm in distress. I need help, but I don't know where to turn to. I start suffering. Narrow. That's single mindedness. We can't see nothing right coming out of what you're doing. Only to and you pressed hard upon. Why? Because you allowed the spirit of offense to enter your heart. When we come into agreement with the seduction of Jezebel, we allow demonic interest resulting in afflictions and trouble and distress. Number six, the spirit of death operates in conjunction with Jezebel. Did you hear that? The spirit of death operates. It's connected with Jezebel. The Lord says he will put Jezebel's children to death. Are you a child of Jezebel? Are you a child of God? That's a question you're going to ask yourself and an answer you need to decide for yourself. Am I really out of Jezebel. But God says he will put children of Jezebel to death. The spirit of death causes not only premature death, but also fear. The spirit of death through the power of Jezebel invokes God's judgment, not just premature death. That means people dying before their time. But also fear, torment, and death to visions. That's bad. Because when you play with the devil, the devil it causes you to rebel against God. You allow yourself to get an open game for destruction. Because God says this judgment will begin with the house of God in the last days. When Christ comes back in the rapture, God says the judgment is going to start the house of God. In other words, there are going to be many so-called born-again believers who will be left during the tribulation period because they did not give their whole heart to Jesus Christ. And because of this, they died prematurely. And, and we're talking about not just natural, but spiritually. You have people die spiritually. But they, they die to their calling and purpose. Listen to this. Words of warning. Words are signs that you may be entering the combat zone with Jezebel. If you have heard others make statements similar to the following examples, then those people have been particularly strongly influenced by Jezebel and need to be prepared for battle. I was so wounded and mistreated in my last church. No one ever recognized my potential. This may indicate that that person was being corrected for improper behavior and would not submit to authority. Have you ever heard someone say that before? I was mistreated at a certain church. I, I'm in church hurt, so I don't go back to this church no more. And 
I don't talk to the people there no more. I don't talk to the pastor no more. They, they don't recognize how great I am and the, the talents I have I can bring to the church, the gifts I can bring to the church. They don't recognize the giving I can give to the church. They ignore me. It may be a sign that the person is being corrected for something they didn't do. And they had a haughty attitude. And would not submit to authority. So we have to be careful how we allow the enemy to manipulate our minds to believe things are not real. I made a statement of, uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I put it on Facebook about fear. Our people fear because they fear what they don't know. I feel God sent me here to help you. I know I just became a member, but I have a teaching gift. When can I start? The word states that your gift will make room for you. When someone is pushing his or her way into a position, it's always a red flag. Ain't that something? Always a red flag. If someone presses on you to date them, be with them, and they're doing everything in their power to, to lure you and bait you, you need to pay attention because that's most times a warning from the enemy. They're trying to trap you up. And God's trying to wake you up and pay attention. God sent me here to be a, be a friend. Someone you can confide in. I've learned to run in the opposite direction when I hear that one. Trust takes time. A person with a pure motive will wait for God's timing in a relationship. You hear that? You can't go into a relationship right away expecting to have trust. It takes time to build trust in the individual. You cannot make a person trust you. You cannot make a person change because you want them to change certain things they're doing, the certain ways they're living. You can't make them do anything they do not want to do. It takes time for individuals to adjust to get to know you. You get to know them in the body of Christ, in the church, in relationship. Once you establish a friendship with an individual, the Holy Spirit began to nurture that friendship to build the trust factor. I remember hearing a pastor years ago was talking about the structure. And he talked about how you have a center trust. He said, in the center of, of, the, of a building, when they begin to build the foundation, begin to build the structure of, of, of the foundation, center being with the trust to uphold the roof. So once you put that center beam in there, you can begin to build the roof in the direction you want to go, and it's going to maintain because you have the foundation, you have the walls in place, you have everything where it needs to be, now you can erect the roof. If you don't have a center beam in a structure and you put a roof on top of it, what's going to happen? It's going to collapse. It's going to fall apart. The same way it is in the kingdom of God. If I don't have my center beam, my center structure in my life with Jesus Christ, Everything I'm trying to do to build upon is not going to work. Because the trust takes time, it takes devotion, it takes commitment, it takes loyalty to walk in obedience to the will of God. It takes time. You cannot rush to become a pastor overnight. You cannot rush to become a minister overnight. It takes time. It's a process in God's timing. It may take some years. You can be called to the ministry. But it takes time to learn how to operate in the ministry. You got to know what type of ministry you're called to. You got to know what calling on your life that you're called to. You got to know how to operate in that calling. You got to be able to be teachable, applicable, and listen. And to see what God wants you to see. 
Listen to this one. No one ever recognizes my gifts. In other words, I want to have a position of authority. And no one would give it to me. Have you heard people say that in church? I have. I heard it before. They come to church because they were a leader in another church. They expect to go from that church to a new church and operate the same gift. If the pastor does not see you qualified to walk in that calling in the area of ministry, he's going to sit you down for a while till you get to know you. To know what type of teaching you have that's in you. To know how you've been structured in your walk in the Lord. To know the life you live for the Lord. I've known pastors, when a person comes in a church that's a minister, they will sit you down six months to a year before they even use you in a church. And you had to attend a new members, membership class. Because they want to make sure you know the bylaws and rules of their church know their rules and regulations. And not only that, know exactly how the church operates. You cannot come into a church thinking you know everything. You got to come humble and submit it to leadership. And once you submit to leadership and they find you qualified, at the examination, then that you preach, you give a motivational word, because you can't do anything unless you find yourself qualified. Listen to this one: No one understands me. Let me go back up a little bit. Let me go to this one. So I have a prophetic gift, and no one allows me to prophesy on their prophetic team. Most of the time. A person influenced by Jezebel would not receive correction concerning false words he or she gave. Because the Jezebel spirit prophesies lies. It prophesies false word and claim it from God. Because Jezebel is often rooted in rejection with this demonic force will receive correction as rejection. Oh my God. That right there is a very point we need to pay attention to. Because sometimes, I've been around people myself, I had to correct me, they get upset, got mad about it. Sometimes when people operate on the spirit of Jezebel, they are quick to give up. They get mad at you you bring a word of correction. And you come in the right manner. In a loving manner. A godly manner. And they turn around get mad at you. When really they are the problem. So they don't see the fault in themselves. They only hear what you said to them. To correct them. And that's all they hear. So they're mad at you. And then they turn around and leave the church. Mad. Because they were out of order with God. Listen to this one. No one understands me. Have you ever felt like that at one point in your life? When you feel like nobody understands you, nobody knows you, you feel like no one cares about you? We have to really pay attention, people. But sometimes we get in that place of selfishness and bitterness, and we're going to blame everybody for the way we feel. Jezebel wants everything her way. If there is any opposition or correction, then it's always someone else's fault. Have you ever heard somebody say it's your fault? Why, why my life the way it is? How any of your children have spoken to you and said, if you hadn't set the badness up before me, I wouldn't be the way I am today. If you weren't an alcoholic, I wouldn't be drinking today. If you weren't an adulterer, I wouldn't be an adulterer. If you wasn't a liar, I wouldn't be a liar today. Because I followed you. I did what you did. So if it's okay for you, then it's okay for me. So it's your fault. When really it's our fault because we have choices. What we choose to do 
and we get the response of our choices and the outcome that we want to hear or receive, then I won't blame everybody else. But when you look in the mirror and the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you, He'll tell you, you are the order with God. You need to repent and get back right, standing with God. And allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse your mind and cleanse your heart. And once you do that, then you find yourself being restored, being forgiven, being set free by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen to this one. The pastors, when I take time to help me, many times we have attempted to get godly counsel, but Jezebel would not would, would walk away. Jezebel would walk away, refusing to be healed. You hear that? The word says in James, the book of James, that we're supposed to confess our faults one to another, right? That we be healed. Mm -hmm. The spirit of Jezebel says, no, there's no need to do that. I'm just going to walk away from everything. Forget it. Ask you to help me. You don't want to help me? Fine, I'm leaving. People do a relationship all the time. Get mad at one another because they can't have their way. And they walk away from relationships. Many times God is trying to correct us through our, our mate that something's wrong with us, but I don't receive it because it comes from that person. I, I used to be just like that. I was just like that. When I was married, my wife would see something wrong with me and would bring correction to me and she was stern. I didn't want to hear it because of what she said. But let somebody else come along, the pastor come along, or someone else come along and say the same correction word, I received it. And God had to rebuke me on that because I was out of order. Because I have to learn how to take correction from whomever God brings it into my life. That's a message for you today. You have to learn how to receive correction even when you don't like it. Because sometimes things that people say to you to correct you, you're not going to feel it. You're not going to want to hear it. You're not going to agree with it. You're going to get mad about it. But like this one pastor told me one time, he said, you might get mad, but I pretty get mad enough to change. It made a difference because it taught me discipline, yeah. how to learn, how to receive correction. Listen to this. Blaming others for the lack of submission and repentance. Because I don't like the way you treated me. I ain't sorry for how, what I said to you or what I did to you. I'm not going to repent. I'm not, I'm not changing my mind. What I said is stands. If you can't take it to that. How many times have you behaved like that? When a pastor or God sent somebody else in your life to bring correction to you and you got mad at the individual because of what they said to you was true? Yeah. And you knew it was true? So to keep from letting them know you know it's true, what they said about you, you stir up confusion. You get mad and want to argue. Because you don't want to hear the truth. Pride goes for destruction. A halt the spirit before a fall. God is to be lifted up in pride. That is the behavior that you're going to have to come out of you in any situation. A haughty spirit. An aggressive spirit. One who always want to argue and fight with folk. Because the truth they told you, you want to receive it. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If you're not ready to receive truth, then you're in the wrong place. Because you're allowing yourself to be in the pathway of the enemy to bring destruction in your life. So we have to get to the place where we allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse us and to purify, to change us, to make us better. We have the desire to be better. And the more you desire to be better, the more you perfect the thing that concerns you. 
It's up to you to make a decision in yourself that you no longer walk in darkness, but walk in light. Allow the Holy Spirit to perfect the thing that concerns your life to make you better every day. The power of repentance, the power of repentance. We're going to stop right here tonight at this point. And I pray that something has really been said to make you think and to examine your heart, to see where are you in your faith. Are you rebellious? Are you stubborn? Are you prideful? Are you haughty? Are you not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? It's up to you to make that choice. If you don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit when he's trying to bring change in your life, you're going to always be one of those words called the bastard child. God said, I don't even know you. You're not even my child. And God wants us to know within ourselves who I am and whose I am. And allow the Holy Spirit to bring change in my mindset and my attitude. If I allow to change my attitude, the trajectory of what I perceive myself will change. Because I have to want the change. I have to want God to fill with the Holy Spirit. To lead God and direct me in this way that he has ordained me to walk in every day of my life. If I don't allow the Holy Spirit to direct me. To walk in a way that seems right and end up in destruction. So tonight I pray that you have heard this word that it has made you think, it's convicting your heart to make you want to change and be better. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you're one of those who fallen short of God's glory, just repent. He'll forgive you, he'll cleanse you, he'll make you better. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You receive a new life tonight. If you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, you can be born again. By confessing with your mouth that Christ died, was buried, and rose again from the dead, and became our Lord and Savior of the whole. And if you receive him in your heart, he'll come in and be the Lord of your life. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing. I thank you, Lord God, for giving me another chance to get things right with you. And I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. Just got born again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that you continue to have a blessed and a prosperous evening. And know that the Lord loves you. He's with you. He's on your side. It's a reigning king. I want you to keep my, uh, my daughter's mother's Pam uh, Jones, Pam Jones, her mother, Pauline Nelson, up in prayer. She's in the hospital in critical condition. We just pray healing over her. So keep praying for Pauline, Pauline Nelson, and God's will be done in her life to heal and deliver. Amen. Any other questions? Anyone have anything else they want to share with me tonight? Amen. Amen. I don't see anything else, but I thank all of you for tuning in tonight. I pray that you have been encouraged tonight and enriched in your spirit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Y'all have a great and a blessed night. And next week, we'll zoom again at the 6 o'clock hour. The Lord said the same. All right, you have a good night.